In every country, the National Red Cross or Red Crescent Society works energetically to build the long-term capacities of communities. This process involves communities identifying their needs, volunteers offering their time, staff coordinating resources, and domestic and international partners providing support where necessary. Ultimately, it helps the vulnerable better manage their lives, reduce the risks they face, and improve their long-term health, well-being, and livelihoods. This video is one of five documentaries created to illustrate best practices in building community and Red Cross and Red Crescent capacities in a variety of cultural contexts from Mongolia, Australia, Nepal and Cambodia. One of the main purposes of the Red Cross and Red Crescent movement is to ensure that its programs and services should first be identified by vulnerable people themselves based on their needs. Once this good participatory planning is achieved at local level, it links to processes that develops a strong national plan that responds to new trends and needs identified. There are many successful examples of Red Cross and Red Crescent organizing themselves well to communicate between all levels of planning. To start a good participatory planning process, a local Red Cross or Red Crescent branch should organize a discussion with vulnerable communities. This should, if possible, include local government and other organizations that can also meet some of the needs of the people. From these discussions come ideas for services, offers of community help such as volunteers and locally raised funds. Once the program is designed and implemented with community participation, the community should also give regular feedback to make sure the service meets their needs or has to be further improved. In deciding its role to support drinking water and other basic schemes, the Nepal Red Cross ensured that it worked in close consultation with affected communities. Teacher and Red Cross volunteer Mohan Rai speaks about how the community was able to reduce water-related illnesses in his village. The community development program provided some help, but most of the help came from actual community participation as we tried to improve the drinking water situation around here. After it was properly organized, as you can see, each community has a drinking water tap at an accessible spot. Good efforts have been carried out to protect the water source. From all these efforts, the frequency of waterborne diseases has decreased, as well as the expense to the community to treat these diseases. By meeting and discussing their ideas, villagers were able to have a direct say in what they needed most. Community representative Kem Kumari talks about the changes she has seen in her community and family since the program started. The concept of drinking clean water was only limited to slogans and not implemented in practice. After the Red Cross implemented its programs, we learned that we can lead a healthy life if we drink safe drinking water. Then we started cleaning the water sources, the taps and outside our homes. I have seen a lot of changes in my family because of the use of clean drinking water. For example, in the past, we used to bring water from the tap and leave the container unattended. Lately, we haven't found many cases of cholera, diarrhea and so on. We go to the health post for advice. We need not go there many times though, because after the Red Cross came, awareness has increased. All these local planning processes lead into Nepal Red Cross's national five-year strategic development plan. Yeah, community development program, especially if you look at the history, it is uh, almost 25 years we have started. And since the very beginning, always it is a participatory development plan, which we always go through the bottom-up approach. First, we do uh, lots of uh, participatory uh, applying participatory rural appraisal methodology while doing baseline and situation analysis, there they are involved. I think in this way we are creating kind of bottom-up participatory planning approach where there is a very strong feeling of the ownership which is which really led to the sustainability of the uh, program or national society strategy, everything.
In Cambodia, where flood, drought, storm and fire are the more frequent natural disasters, the Red Cross once again uses participatory planning with communities affected by regular disasters to strengthen long-term community capacities. Chem Lon from Tamale Village understands how important it is to identify the natural disaster risks in his community. In the past, we evacuated people to another village called Prai Chaviet. Now we have a plan with the assistance from the Red Cross. We have boats to prepare for disasters. The measures are to provide boats, water ceramic filters and drugs. We also dig ponds to prepare for floods. I have a plan at village level. For example, we want more boats and we want more roads so that we can travel. The Red Cross consults with communities to ensure transparency and participation. I would like to say that this area is often prone to natural disasters. People here are very poor. When we realize that people are in need of something, we invite them to come here so that we can consult with them. Community consultation is very important for us to be informed about their needs. They in turn need to know the consequences of disasters. Consultation is conducted to promote participation from everyone, volunteers, communities and from the people themselves. We submit the plan for approval from the provincial level and the national level to donors so that donors can provide assistance to communities. The Cambodian Red Cross use these local participatory assessments and planning processes to link to a national plan on disaster management. From past results, we have been informed that local communities have diverse needs. They have different vulnerabilities to disasters. So if we do not go to local communities, we will not know about the needs of those communities. So, survey or assessment is very necessary so that Cambodian Red Cross at the central level is able to develop sound policies or strategic plans to respond to the needs of the communities. So far, from the assessment results, Cambodian Red Cross developed a disaster preparedness strategy or disaster management strategy for all stages of a disaster. Realizing that volunteers come from vulnerable groups themselves, the Red Cross in Orkhon province, Mongolia, set up volunteer councils as a new way to listen to the needs of specific groups of people. This also helps branches participate in joint planning with others, as Dambin Butlud, head of the Orkhon province Socialist Democratic Youth Association, explains. Since 1999, we have collaborated on numerous projects, including a blood donation project in association with the Central Blood Bank amongst youth members. We have also organized awareness and prevention campaigns against HIV-AIDS and other sexually transmitted diseases at our local university campus. From next year, we will be implementing a project to provide assistance to disabled people in our community. We will also launch a donor campaign amongst Orkhon province youth, uniting all Orkhon NGOs in the youth donor campaign to donate blood. Besides youth organizations, the branch also consults closely with other diverse groups. The Elderly Council, for instance, is an active body of 21 people that plan and implement activities to bring effective help both to the elderly as well as other members in the wider community. One member explains the key role elders play in the branch planning process. I have been a member of the Red Cross in Orkhon for over 20 years and a board member of the Elderly Council for the past eight years. I am responsible for the social care program and assist about 15 elderly people in our community who have no primary caregivers on hand. Along with our other volunteers, we raise awareness of humanitarian values among youth, share with them our experiences. Our plan for 2009 is to increase Red Cross youth volunteers, broaden membership, increase donor support and promote our work through the media in commemoration of the 70th anniversary of the Mongolian Red Cross. The participation of vulnerable people in planning services for them leads to them being more involved in Red Cross activities. 
In Bayangol Branch, an active group of volunteers regularly ask vulnerable people they meet for suggestions on how to improve services for them. Since becoming a beneficiary of the handicraft project and getting connected with the Red Cross, even though I am disabled, it has given me the opportunity to learn new handicraft techniques. I also teach and train other people on handicraft skills. Many Red Cross beneficiaries are attending my beadwork classes, especially young people. As we have seen earlier, all Red Cross and Red Crescent societies have a national plan of some kind. Mongolia Red Cross organizes regular reviews of its plans and services to make sure they respond to changing needs. Secretary General Mr. Sam Dandovji explains what is needed for comprehensive national plans to be formulated. Information is very, very important, so that's why we pay a lot of attention to the information exchange uh, process, where we invite uh, different branch people, including the volunteers and uh, secretaries and staff, and leaders, and then we try to review what actually been done, and we are going to uh, set up the next uh, phase uh, uh, for the organization. And now, uh, actually, it's very important to see uh, the small national society, like Mongolian uh, National Red Cross, to see the vulnerability and capacity assessment on, on the sport. And of course, uh, to a certain extent, we de do some CAS process uh, already started in this country. And there are a number of means to have interviews, to have uh, roundtable discussions and seminars, workshops, where we usually exchange information, uh, what we need, and what we should do to better serve the people, especially the vulnerable people in this country. In Australia, as part of its commitment to participatory planning, the Red Cross decided to find ways to work with more young people to better understand their needs and vulnerabilities. Sean Hazeldean, National Manager of the Save a Mate campaign, shares the example of one traditional service now adapted to a new generation. We've been delivering first aid for years across the organisation. But uh, for young people, there was a real need for it to be changed into a context of their lives. And so in the late 90s, um, drug and alcohol overdoses actually became one of the largest killers of young people in Australia. And so we took first aid and adapted it to meet that need. And so this proved extremely popular with young people. We also have, uh, I guess, groups of these young people, or teams of these young people who participate in the program who more formally advise us on what should be happening in the program. And one such area was around the development of, of services to address mental health issues. As a result, we went out and developed some mental health strategies in the same program. Youth Advisory Committee member Brioni Allen touches on two examples of new programs that were initiated because of participatory planning processes with young people. One such project is the World Aware project, which is really a community engagement project which started with the Sudanese community in Western Australia and has expanded to involve other new and emerging communities. Young people and particularly the Youth Advisory Committee in WA played a really big role in rolling out the Save Mate program. It really is a program for young people by young people so it was really important to get the feedback of the YAC on how um, it could best be facilitated and how young people could be targeted by the program. It really was just a process of um, research and consulting with various stakeholders um, to create a proposal which was accepted nationally. 20-year-old Sudanese migrant and Red Cross youth volunteer Flora Fakira says that she has, without doubt, benefited from Red Cross activities. She is happy to contribute her ideas to developing the program and uses the CRUMP to help engage other young people at risk. And the World Aware program helped me a lot because we met up with young people from different communities, not just my community, a different one. We learned to, about communication and we learned about self-expression. CRUMP is a very positive dance that young people can use to release anger and frustrations. 
small ideas from local participatory discussions can grow to become a national campaign, and Australia's Save a Mate program provides an excellent example of how this can happen. And so I think because we've constantly uh, listened to their needs and built in um, strategies that they you know, felt were important and addressed problems that, they, that were uh, important to them, um, that as a result they've really engaged in the program and um, it, it's just constantly grown. And I would say probably the other thing that, that really uh, helped us on this way was because there are so many young people involved in the project and designing it and being a part of it and then delivering it, um, the communication styles and, uh, in the program are really appropriate to young people. And, and across the whole country, everywhere, um, we have more requests for this service than we can possibly meet. Um, so that, that, I think, is a real testimony to its, its relevance to, to young people. All Red Cross and Red Crescent societies have a national plan of some kind, but the best ones show how they are drawn directly from the ideas and involvement of vulnerable people and communities.